Hey guys, welcome back to Shredcraft RC. Back here with the Rookie Drift 2.0. Pretty much stock. I was driving it last night, put a couple packs through it, and the only thing that I've changed, I did the anti-dive shim in the rear front tow block, and then I added these Rev D knuckles that I had in a box with a aluminum hex, only because I needed to change the offset for these wheels because these are 12s so if you can see pretty wide offset uh, and I wanted to reduce the scrub radius and the rookie drift comes with 8.5 mil front hexes so I believe these are 5 mil or 5.5 and then that's a 12 mil so I was able to reduce the scrub radius on that with these knuckles and then the other thing I did because when I was fitting the body I wanted to make sure the wheels had full movement is I put the bottom arm shim in the back to push that up and I think only because I thought that the anti-dive shim reduced more caster than it did but I'll show you here if I can get this to focus within doing that the caster is now almost 10 degrees so that's too much so immediately throwing it on to the alignment rack I can see that I have some alignment issues so I'm gonna go ahead and change those shims on the arm try to square it back up get it more in the uh, five to seven degree range on caster there and then I will f go back and forth between camber and toe and I'll show you how I do that when I get there um, right now I can already tell one wheel I haven't turned it on but I just self-centered it. This wheel looks like it's at about negative nine degrees and this wheel looks like it's about negative eight degrees. So it could be the bottom arm spacing. I'll have to go through and measure that with a set of calipers. And then on the rear, it looks like I might have a little too much negative camber here in the rear at like nearly negative four degrees. So I'll take those back down to like negative three. I did put a shin under the top arm here, the top arm mount onto the knuckle. It's just a one mil shin, but it seemed to help. And then the problem I was having, which I think the caster has to do, is if I got off throttle and was at full angle, the car would just stay at full angle and kind of lock up and slide, like spin out, I guess. And I kept thinking that something was rubbing on the body causing the wheel to stop and it to spin out but it, I don't think that's the case I think this is too much caster so I think that's part of the problem and then possibly the electronics with the 10 BL after driving my AccuVance rad setup the finite detail you have in the trigger is pretty phenomenal compared to dri then going back to more of a basic entry level ESC it definitely more or less feels like an on and off switch. So it's like all the power, no power, all the power, no power compared to my AccuVance setup. The motor feels really nice. It's smooth. That's a nice, a nice buy for the money. And then the gyro and servo feel nice. They're smooth. And I don't know if that has anything to do with the steering issues. Maybe we can try a V4 in a different servo just to test and then I mean the shocks feel good but it's something maybe in the future I'll throw a set of big bores on there but I think for now we just kind of get the stock chassis tuned the only other thing I might try is changing the diff fluid and then I'll go to a 5,000 weight in stock if you remember we put a 7,500 weight so lighten up the fluid maybe a little less fluid just because we run on polished concrete and it seems that a more open diff creates more traction in some of the tighter corners. I'm going to go ahead and get to work and fix this front end alignment and then I will show you what it looks like when I get it dialed in and share my full Rookie Drift 2.0 alignment settings with you guys. I got my shim changed there on the arm and then just wanted to show you guys here the, what the caster changed to with just changing one shim on the arm. But if you saw before that was 10 degrees and now we're probably closer to six degrees of caster there so that's going to be a lot better steering response not as lazy but still be stable in the corners my front camber is at nine degrees negative nine degrees on both wheels and then my toe is it's going to be hard to see with the glare but just one degree of toe out on each wheel and then on the rear, I'm at negative 3 degrees on each wheel. And then 
stock factory tow blocks on the rear, which maybe is negative 1.9 rear tow. I can't really check because um, the motor and stuff's in the high position. So next thing I'm going to do, I will write down all those numbers or type them up and then put them in a list. And then you guys can take a screen capture of the Rookie Drift 2.0 alignment settings that I'm rocking right now. And I'm going to go ahead and pull the diff and throw that oil in. So I'll do that and then see if there's anything else kind of stock tuning that is needed, but not really. This, this chassis is pretty good straight out of the box. So uh, get back to tuning and I'll share more tips with you. I got the diff out here and I don't know if you can see, but it's wet in there. So self-lubricating diff. Yokomo diffs always seem to kind of leak out a little. Uh, you guys saw me put it together. I was pretty careful in keeping the gasket square, but always a little leakage. So I'm going to clean this up. Notice the shocks too. They have a little wet spots on them. Collect all the dust and grime off the track. So I'll get to changing this fluid out and clean this up a little bit. All right, so I got the diff drained. Kind of let it sit there and drain out. What I did was took a little uh, rag, paper towel, dabbed it in some alcohol, went over the gasket, all the mating surface, uh, just to grab the rest of that oil. And then I have 5,000 weight Yokomo diff oil here, and I'm going to fill this just like I did the first time, kind of put it down into the cracks, give it a spin, let it soak in, and rotate it kind of work the oil into all the gears and so I will probably do this off camera seal it up I will take some alcohol and clean the outside of the diff and all that oil that leaked out previously see if we get a better mating surface this time no leaks and then I'll give it a spin and see how the wheels move show you what it looks like when we're reassembled and then I want to go back over the alignment stuff because that was kind of brief but I'll show you guys how I do a full alignment on the car so coming up all back together got the electronics stripped off because I wanted to run a little experiment here budget electronics setup and then probably a little more hobbyist enthusiast level setup maybe somebody's first time setup but this is one that you can find easily online and at your hobby store this is a hobby wing xd10 esc and then the d10 10.5 turn motor and this is a great pairing because you can run this with a Wi-Fi box and then connect to your phone to change all the settings. So super handy. This setup, you have to use the old school box or using the beep method, holding the button and tuning it. I would also recommend a fan on this setup because this motor is getting warm. So I threw a fan with it. So I wanted to see how much these weigh in comparison because I think this is a nice upgrade from this setup. So I think we'll throw this one in, leave the same servo, same gyro for now, because that's a nice budget setup. So maybe throw these in, but I wanna see what the weight difference is. All right, so about 270 grams without the fan. We had the fan. About 300 grams for all of that. XD10 motor. 158 grams wiring 260 grams so this is actually a lighter setup let's see if we put a fan and shroud 288 so still slightly lighter than that considering this is a full aluminum case and fan and this is a plastic case, aluminum heatsink, plastic fan, full aluminum cased motor. This one is aluminum but has a lot of, lot more cut out. I think we'll get this mounted up into the Rookie Drift 2.0 and continue our tuning. Dive back into that alignment because the weight is going to change slightly and I'll show you what it looks like when it's all strapped up. Let's go over alignment one more time here. So you wanna have your basic tools available, turnbuckle wrench mainly, and then a, a two mil. So what I'll do when I first set it up, 
is you want to plug it in with a battery and have it at the ride height and weight minus the body of course. This is the Yeah Racing alignment rack. I got it at Scale Science, my local track. I'm sure you could search online and find it yourself. You're going to need your remote, turn it on, then go ahead and turn the car on. That will center your servo. So as long as you've measured your arms and everything's even side to side, you should be within the ballpark of how your alignment should be set up. So going forward, I will just glance at caster, not since I've already made my change, I know that this is sitting right about, I mean, centered on the wrench. That's probably six degrees, maybe seven degrees of caster. So perfect for drifting. Your caster is going to control how stable the car is in the corner. Once you get past seven or eight degrees, then you start getting this inside wheel jacking a little more. Uh, maybe more of a comp setup. Somebody who drives aggressively, but caster. A lot of caster will slow down your transition speed and make the car feel lazy or slower in transition. So going up to about five degrees of caster, the car will feel snappy and fast. So that's why I think sitting in the six to seven range is a good place to start. And then of course the feeling that you want, you can change tune for your feeling in driving. And then I will look at my camber and I got these both at negative nine degrees. So this is a big thing is your camber and your toe are related. So if you change toe, your camber will slightly change. So that's something you need to go back and forth with. And then on toe, I like to run between one and two degrees of toe out per wheel. And I have these right at one degree of toe out per wheel and again negative nine degrees of camber six to seven degrees of caster in the front and then on the rear i have set up here i like to start around negative three degrees depending on what tire you run and on what surface the reason for not zeroing out your rear camber in a drift car is because you're always drifting so what happens when the weight transfers of the car and you're leaning on the one side and drifting is this contact patch zeroes out if you start at static with zero degrees of rear camber when you go when you're drifting and the car's leaning your lead wheel is actually rolling to positive camber and you're going to lose traction since this lead wheel is going to have all the weight and all the momentum that's going to be creating the grip so you want to keep this wheel starting from negative three to negative two degrees depending on how your rear camber link is set up for camber progression under squat or under lean so you can see with a lot of lean this wheel will zero out so depending on your chassis and your rear camber link position you're going to want to dial that in so you're using the inside half of the tire when looking at a tire so inside of the wheel you want to be using the inside half of that wheel so under suspension travel it's rolling like that instead of like that so don't zero out your rear camber always have negative rear camber just a little bit so that is this setup if you guys have any questions definitely just let me know down in the comments and i will be sure to answer those i got these electronics tidied up i think they're looking pretty good maybe we'll plug in the esc tuner and see what our settings are starting at same servo same gyro change the knuckles and the alignment so those are my settings for this yours may vary and we'll continue tuning the rookie drift 2.0 all right so a very rookie mistake there i actually had not calibrated this to this remote because this esc has been sitting a while so first thing you got to do is run the calibration you hold the power button down until it starts beeping and you do neutral on your remote 
then it beeps. You do full throttle, it beeps. You do full reverse, it beeps. And then it's calibrated. So now I'm connected. I did a reset and a firmware update. So everything is back to stock settings, which I didn't change a whole lot anyway. So we can go back, get this, how it was set up. So I am going to just scroll some, through some of these and change what I had previously changed. So the drive frequency is at 32, but if I go up to 48, I think it's gonna smoothen out. It will be less punchy. So I wanna see what that feels like. All of this looks good. Drag brake at zero. I may just put this at five. Rate control frequency went up to 16K. Boost timing, I'm gonna turn these down just because there's no need to run a lot of boost. 6,000 RPM start, 22,500 end. I'm just gonna leave them, turn turbo down to eight. Delay, I'm not gonna mess with that yet. And now I'm gonna save that. So, factory settings on the Hobbywing Drift ESC are great. You don't need to change a whole lot, in my experience. It's gonna be your personal feel. So I'm gonna turn that off, unplug the programmer, put this little plug back in, and then make sure everything's good to go from there. So I'm just gonna turn it back on and then check that wheel direction's good. Turning direction's good. I'll have to go set endpoints since we changed the alignment and anytime that you change your alignment you are going to want to reset your endpoints which is done by holding the button down as you start the ESC. So hold the button down on the gyro, see if I can, I don't think I'll be able to do it one handed but you hold the button down start, start the gyro, it will start flashing and you set your wheels all the way to the stopper on your servo and you go onto your remote and you go to your endpoints and you adjust these first as you're setting your endpoint. So for instance, 71% to the left is where this stopper is hitting. And sometimes I go one or two clicks more just because through the wheel travel if you have bump steer, your hub's going to move a little bit. So you want the stopper just touching that lower arm. And um, yeah, so you then once you get it to your left side, you hit the button, it will release. And then you go back and you go to the right and do the same process. Tune it on your remote first and then hold it at full lock, hit the button and you will be uh, endpoint ready. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and then throw some wheels on, double check the suspension and everything, make sure we're good to go and see how it feels compared to how it did the other night. I know everyone's gonna wanna see the Ackerman sweep, so here it is. So it's pretty parallel, how I usually set up my cars. See if we can look under the wheel. Not too bad. All right, guys, I think I'm going to leave you there with that info on the alignment on the Rookie Drift 2.0. And then for the next episode, I just wanted to show you guys. But I've been making some things for this chassis. So I'm going to test out a high mount battery tray and a new top deck design and then some nicer electronics. Got the big bores on there. My new bumper design. These are available. USA shipping only. Contact me on Instagram to pick one up. 
these battery trays if this design works out. I can start selling these as well. The top deck edition, it's a uh, aluminum top deck. And then again, big bores and one of my new bumper designs in the front. Other than that, stock Rookie Drift 2.0. So I just wanna say thanks for watching. If you guys like this content, be sure to hit the thumbs up and subscribe for more awesome RC drift car content. And I will catch you guys on the next one where I start making some parts for this car. So thanks to all the new subscribers. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe for more uh, drift videos. I'll catch you guys on the next one. See ya.